One of the games I find myself playing a lot lately is F1 2020, and that's due in large part to the fact that Next Level Racing and Thrustmaster sent us a full-on racing sim kit, uh, and that has just made a, a huge, a, a substantial difference in the feedback that I receive from the cars that I drive in that game. Obviously, most of those are Formula One, maybe Formula Two cars. Um, they behave a lot differently than just your average touring car or your average sports car. Uh, but I love the fast-paced nature of Formula One, and I'm a huge Formula One fan in real life, uh, which is why I wanted to at least start with F1 2020. Now, I'm obviously not the best at this game. My times are certainly not the best in this particular clip that you're seeing here either. Uh, but my skills have dramatically improved since receiving this racing sim from Next Level Racing, and the feedback through the Thrustmaster uh, pedals, as well as the steering wheel. It's just, it, it's, it's unlike anything I've ever experienced before, especially since I've really only been playing with controller and the little uh, feedback that you get from a controller. It's just, it's laughable when seen in the context of what this steering wheel can do. And this isn't even a very expensive racing or sim steering wheel. You could get some from uh, other brands that cost thousands of dollars. I'm sure those feel insane, but uh, I am just, more or less content with this because I know that it's something that I really couldn't pay any more for or justify paying any more for personally. Even though the stuff was sent to me, um, it would just feel weird to preach at, you know, multi-thousand dollar setups that I would never buy myself. I'm like, hey, go buy this. Well, yeah, it's easy for me to say I didn't actually pay for it. Uh, so I think this is a great entry level setup and it's gonna be fine for most amateurs. But I've been noticing as of late that I am somewhat hardware limited, more specifically by the graphics card. So in these clips, you can see in the top left, these are our system usages. The GPU is being leveraged almost 100% uh, and our CPU is just kind of chilling there. So the graphics card currently, what you're seeing is an RTX 2060. This is actually a reference 2060, and the CPU in here is a Core i7-8700 from Intel. So it's pretty obvious that our CPU is not the bottleneck, neither is our system RAM, neither is VRAM for that matter, it is just the GPU. The 2060 is not enough for 1440p at very high or max settings like you're seeing here. And thankfully, a graphics card upgrade is pretty simple to take care of. And I'm sure it's apparent by this point, the card we're upgrading to is the RTX 3080. This is a Founders Edition 3080. I'm choosing this one for a few reasons. I think it will perform well first off in the Node 202, which is a more compact ITX case, more like a console form factor. Uh, and then for two, I think that the adapter, the little power adapter for this uh, unique cable here that connects to the graphics card is just the ugliest thing I've ever seen in a modern graphics card. Uh, so it will be concealed in the Node 202, which is nice. Now, in order to upgrade, we're gonna need to upgrade power supplies, and that's where, of course, our SF750 comes into play. So this build actually uses the SF600, which at the time was the highest wattage available in the SF lineup from Corsair. This is an SFX power supply. It has custom sleeve cables running to all the vital components. These were sent by uh, Cable Mod. The problem is, 600 watts, it's just, it's not enough really for a 3080. Granted, the 8700 here is gonna be fairly efficient. We're not overclocking, not that we even could, it's not a case skew, but we want a bit more breathing room in terms of power, and the SF750 gives us that. You can see just how small this power supply is. I can literally grasp this whole thing with one hand. It almost wraps around it. Uh, it is super compact, that's the point of SFX, but a lot of these units, just because of how small they are, uh, don't reach wattages anywhere near 750. And this actually, I mean, it's, it's it's kind of a cute unit. I don't know. It's uh, looking like it looks like it uses a hundred millimeter fan, maybe slightly under that. It's definitely no one twenty mil fan. It's fully modular, which is nice, especially in these compact cases. You can pick and choose the cables that you need for your system and omit the rest, so there's not a lot of extra clutter. And if it's anything like the SF six hundred, this thing's gonna run super quiet. It's also eighty plus platinum efficient, which pretty much speaks for itself. Uh, the only problem is it's a fairly expensive power supply, and that's just a consequence of being one of the only units in this form factor with this wattage and this efficiency rating and this modular layout on the market. If you have no competition, you pretty much charge whatever you want. I'd like to see this come down in price a bit, maybe it will in a year or two, but uh, it's the price you pay for ITX form factors. So enough rambling, it's time to upgrade. Shouldn't take us too long, stay with me. If you're looking for a sleek and efficient AIO for your next PC, check out Be Quiet's Pure Loop AIO lineup. Choose between four popular sizes that all sport Pure Wings 2 fans and enjoy qualities like dedicated fill ports and decoupled pumps for minimal vibration and maximum aesthetic at the block. Learn more about Be Quiet Pure Loop AIOs below.
right, so what I've done here, I've taken two separate clips from the two different systems, which are basically the same system, just with the graphics card swap and the power supply swap. And I've kind of juxtaposed them together here in Premiere Pro. So that's what you're looking at. And you can start and stop, you can see how the system usages change, uh, not only over time per clip, but also between clips with the different cards. So I'll just pause it here for one second. We're pretty much in the same spot in the, the lap. I was running the same lap in the same circuit, and uh, there's a little bit of variance here, but for the most part, it's the exact same environment, the exact same settings. The uh, 3080 pulling in over 200 FPS, pretty much the entire lap, which is awesome. Uh, and the Temperatures are about 80 degrees Celsius throughout. Now you notice the GPU utilization here is still at 95%, but CPU utilization is at 41% here, and this would be mid 40s depending on when you stop it. And that is virtually double what we were experiencing here on the left. So the CPU is only working about 24% of total capacity uh, and we're getting about 111 FPS. This is literally a result here of the CPU having to keep up with the frame rate that the graphics card is basically pushing out. Uh, so the CPU has to do more work, right, for those frames, and that's why you're seeing this utilization bump. Uh, so the CPU is actually doing a bit more now because we have a, a stronger graphics card in our system. That is awesome. That means that our graphics card is inherently less of a bottleneck overall for this particular game, which was the entire point of this update. And on top of that, the monitor I use for my racing sim is a 165 hertz panel. It's a 1440p panel. So you can see on the left, I wasn't getting the full 165 hertz. I wasn't seeing the full 165 frames I could have seen on that panel because the graphics card wasn't capable of keeping up in the ultra or high preset in 1440p uh, in this game. Uh, so just switching to a, a better graphics card all around allows me to actually fully utilize the monitor refresh rate I had at my disposal, which is another reason why I wanted to upgrade. Another interesting note, the 3080, despite running at about the same temperature under load as the 2016, these are both FE cards, by the way, straight uh, Founders Edition models from NVIDIA, uh, the 3080 stayed much quieter at this temperature under load, which is another plus, especially if I'm not gaming with a headset. Typically I do in the racing sim, but if I'm not, I just have them, you know, I'll maybe turn up the volume a bit and have them rest around my neck uh, just because my ears get a little, you know, a little worn out after wearing a headset for too long. Um, I don't hear the system anywhere near as much as I did with the 2060 in it and we're getting literally double, if not more than double the frame rate. So there you have it, folks. I think these results pretty much speak for themselves. I mean, the 3080 is what, a $700 card. Don't pay scalper prices, be patient. You don't need a 3080 right now. And if you do need a newer graphics card, it doesn't have to be a 3080 at this moment. But uh, the 3080 is double the price of the 2060 at launch. The 2060 was around, what, 350 MSRP? And we're seeing double the performance, which, makes sense. But not only that, in this case, we're seeing the CPU being leveraged a lot more, which is awesome. That's due in large part to the higher frame rate. We are not VRAM soaked at all system RAM. We still have eight gigs to spare there. For this game, I would say that with the 3080 in it, much better balanced system. And that was the whole point of this video, the whole point of the update. You don't need to rebuild your entire system, especially if your CPU is not the limiting factor. Uh, if at the end of the day, you're still on KB Lake even, or I would say as far back as Zen or Zen Plus, maybe you have a Ryzen 5 1600, analyze the, the usages in game. Use MSI Afterburner, use Reva Statistics Tuner. That's what we're doing to set this up. We have a video talking about how to set these up so that you can analyze bottlenecks yourself. But uh, pick a game or two that you play a ton and then set this up the way we have and look at the usages and see how the usages scale across different in-game settings, different presets, different resolutions. You'll be able to identify what specifically is the bottleneck in your system and that will help you narrow down what you need to upgrade. It just results in spending less money. Don't spend what you don't need to spend. Now, obviously it's your money. You can spend it however you want. I'm just trying to, uh, minimize the exposure, so to speak. Look, I could have looked at the 8700 and said, you know what, that's a Core i7 8700, two generations old, I need to upgrade my CPU. But you're seeing it here, I don't need to. Now, if I, if I switch to a 5900X or 5800X Zen 3 chip, I might see a small performance bump there, but from what I'm seeing in these usages, the CPU is not the limiting factor. So it doesn't make sense to upgrade my entire platform when just a major graphics card upgrade will do. With all that said, if you guys like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate that. Consider clicking the subscribe button, leaving a comment, that feedback is appreciated. And I'll catch you in the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for beefing up my racing sim with me.